I'd like to continue the series on Art of Electronics Analog Discovery experiments. And what I have done is I've tried to improve the graphics on the Analog Discovery display. The videos that uh, the first uh, couple in this series and the, the little one on the, the new toys video, the, uh, I was using a different, uh, I was using the default setup for waveforms and I've been playing around with the display. I won't go into all of the things that I've changed, but, but basically I've changed the background from black to white on the display and I think that works better with my camera. And then I've changed the color to a, a dark purple, which seems to have better contrast than what I was working with earlier. So what you're seeing on the screen is essentially the same uh, impedance analyzer results that are in the uh, new toys video, the one immediately before this one. I'm going to run it once so you can see how that works. And one reason that I wanted to improve the video is I noticed that a lot of the uh, adjustments that I make in the, uh, while I can see them perfectly well, when I look at them on the video, they either don't show up very clearly or they don't show up at all. So I'm hoping that this new uh, display format will fix that. Let me know in your comments if you like this format better than the, than the old. Uh, but I, th I think it's going to work better. Uh, where I'm going to go from here, though, is I'd like to examine the issue of impedance and reactance in a video, and that's what this one's going to be about. So I'm going to be using the impedance analyzer to talk about inductive reactance, capacitive reactance, and their relationship. So I'm a little ahead of myself here because this is actually uh, an example of the combination of an inductive reactance, a capacitive reactance, and a resistance. And it shows a resonant peak, which we will get to toward the end of this video again. But fundamentally, we want to start out by looking at what happens to the impedance of a circuit as frequency changes. And so to do that, I'm going to have to digress slightly to some uh, fundamentals of uh, reactance and what is called the reactance triangle. For those of you following along in the book, that is the Art of Electronics lab manual that I've talked about in the previous uh, videos in this series, some of what I'm going to talk about can be found in the lab manual under 3N, as in November, 0.4.1 on resonance. And mainly what I'm going to be trying to do is to show a little bit of how you get the calculations in a resonant circuit. That is, there's a, a resonant point where the impedance is the highest, and the impedance below that is primarily determined by the uh, capacitor, and the impedance above that is primarily determined by the inductor. And so let's see how that comes about. And to do that, I'm going to introduce a concept that I learned very early in uh, electronics called the impedance triangle. One way to visualize what is happening in a circuit that contains resistors, capacitors, and inductors is to draw what is called an impedance triangle. That is, if you have along the uh, y-axis the capacitor and the inductor in the circuit, and along the horizontal or x-axis you have the resistance in the circuit, you essentially are drawing a vector diagram in which as the capacitive reactance, that is the uh, amount of uh, the effective 
resistance or the amount that the reactor, that the capacitor reacts with that particular frequency. As the frequency starts out at zero down here, and the capacity reactance of a capacitor at zero frequency is infinite. So it sometimes helps if you look at a diagram like this one, where down here is the frequency of zero, and as the frequency increases it follows around this circle, and eventually the frequency reaches infinity. Now, of course, there's no such thing, really, but basically think of this as very, very high relative to the circuit you're working with. So in some circuits, this could be a megahertz, and in others, it could be 100 gigahertz. But at any rate, it's very, very high frequency. And down here, this is actually DC, direct current, not moving at all. The capacitive reactance is the amount of uh, reactance that a capacitor has. The inductive reactance is also uh, the amount of reactance that an inductor has. At resonance, the capacitive reactance and the inductive reactance cancel. That's this point here, shown as uh, a pure resistance. That is when Xc equals uh, Xl, as shown here. So what does that mean on our impedance triangle? Well, the impedance of a circuit is basically the vector sum of the resistance and the reactance. Now, when the frequency is down here where the capacitor is dominating, it, is, it would be a similar triangle down here. So I'm drawing it in the upper part. That is, I'm drawing this for uh, a point above the resonant frequency. Z is the normal letter designating the impedance. X normally designates reactance. And of course, R is resistance. So here is R, here is XC, here is XL. And if you have a certain amount of resistance and a certain amount of, in this case, inductive reactance, that produces an impedance, which is the hypotenuse of this triangle. And that's where it gets the name impedance triangle, because the angle between R and Z is called the phase angle, and the length of Z is called the magnitude. And you can compute the length of Z by taking the square root of the resistance squared plus the effective reactance squared. Now, by effective reactance, what I mean is when XC and XL are equal, they cancel, and the effective reactance is zero, and that's where this line is. When the frequency is down in this corner, this quadrant, the capacitor dominates, and when the frequency is in this quadrant, the inductance dominates. So, even though there might be a capacitor and a, an inductor in the circuit, the effective impedance is determined by which one of those is larger at a particular time. I find it useful to visualize this in my head when I'm looking at uh, displays like the analog discovery. So now let's move on and look at a couple of uh, uses for the analog discovery's impedance analyzer and, and then bring it all together by coming back to the concept of resonant frequency. This is a run with a 100 nanofarad capacitor in the impedance analyzer. You will notice that on the left hand side over here, there is the, it starts out at 1 hertz. And one reason that I'm showing you the finished result is uh, you probably are aware that in order to plot a point, the analog discovery needs to take several cycles of, of data. And so at one hertz, for example, to get 20 cycles worth of data, it has to take 20 seconds. So it takes a very long time to do this first data point. And then maybe the next one takes 19 seconds and then 18 seconds and so on. So it takes forever to plot these low frequencies. So I've 
allowed it to run, and now I'm plotting the results. So in the upper left-hand corner, you see that the uh, reactance of the capacitor starts out uh, around 2 megohms and drops continually until at a kilohertz, it only has about 2 kiloohms of reactance. Down here on the phase chart, you see that the phase remains about minus 90 degrees throughout this entire range. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start at 100 hertz right here and go all the way up to a megahertz and show you what happens then. Okay, I've set it up and I'm going to now run a single run. And you notice this time it starts at around just a little over 10 kilo ohms on the left and by the time it gets up to a megahertz the reactance is down to well this is the bottom is 1 ohm and this line is 10 ohms so this would be 10 something less than 5 maybe around 2 ohms of reactance at 1 megahertz let's look what's happening to the phase though here you see it's minus 90 all the way out to 10 kilohertz or so and then it begins to do some kind of weird some weird uh, changes and so what's going on there well that's probably because I have the wrong value of resistor and the, near the end we'll take a look at the way that this uh, this analyzer works but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the resistance to 1k ohm and rerun this. It says the resistor is still too high. So let's lower it to 100 ohms. And you'll notice that's the reason why this, this add-on board is so useful. You can do this without the add-on board. But it makes it much more uh, interesting or, or much more efficient anyway. Now notice that what is happening is the the phase is starting to swing from minus 90 and and go down to in this case about minus 75. So let's increase our upper frequency limit to uh, well let's say let's go to 10 megahertz and run that. Watch the phase start at minus 90 and then, out here, past a megahertz, it, it really swings up. Well, what's going on there? Well, this is what is called a parasitic. What is happening is the inductance of the leads of the capacitor are starting to form a resonant circuit as we get out here to around 3 megahertz. That's this little dip right here. So, let's now also... It now says the resistor is too high, so we'll lower it again to 10 ohms and run again. Now on the left it says the resistor is too low, but on the right you'll notice that the, it does no longer says the resistor is too high. And you see we get this little parasitic resonance in this capacitor. Now let's take a look at an inductor. Now we're doing the 10 millihenry inductor from 100 hertz on the left to 10 megahertz on the right, or 5 megahertz on the right. Notice that we're getting a resonant peak at around 300 kilohertz. That is due to the stray capacitance of the leads of this inductor. In other words, it's no longer an inductor as the uh, frequency begins to approach 100 kilohertz or 200 kilohertz, the stray capacitance starts to parallel the inductor. And at about 300 kilohertz, the stray capacitance equals the uh, reactance, or I should say the reactance of the stray capacitance equals the reactance of the inductor. And that's where we find a resonant peak. And notice that the phase also switches and goes negative at that same point. 
So just as with the capacitor showing lead inductance, stray inductance due to the leads, the inductor is stro showing stray capacitance due to the leads. So this is common. Now let's take a quick look at the analog discovery circuit, that is the impedance analyzer circuit, and then we'll finish up by putting these two components in parallel and doing a resonant circuit. Here is how the analog discovery is connected to do impedance analysis. The scope 1 input is connected to WaveGen 1's output and that signal, that is the WaveGen 1's signal, is one side of the load. The other side of the load is connected through a resistor to ground and scope 2 is connected at this point to monitor the voltage across that resistor. And so this is how the impedance analyzer gets connected. The add-on board, and you can download this schematic from the website, so don't, don't try to follow it necessarily here, is basically just a way to switch using relays a series of resistors in uh, basically decade steps and consists of a series of relays and resistors that can be the relays can be controlled by the analog discovery and then those relays in turn switch resistors in and out of the circuit. It makes it much more convenient to use the impedance analyzer function but please remember you do not need to have this board to do this work. You can make these connections yourself and do impedance analysis using your analog discovery as long as you hook it up this way. Now that may mean that you'll have to manually change this resistor depending on the load you're doing and the frequency range that you're working with. And that's convenient using the add-on board but not essential. Now we have paralleled the 100 nanofarad capacitor and the 10 millihenry inductor. And we are running a frequency range from 100 hertz on the left to 50 kilohertz on the right. We're using a resistor of 100 ohms and here is the curve. You notice that our resonant point is around 5 kilohertz. This, this is 5 kilohertz, this line right there, so it's just a little less than 5 kilohertz. And that is the point where the phase changes suddenly from uh, a very high positive value and swings and goes negative to negative phase. In this case, eventually it goes to negative 90 degrees. So this is a characteristic of uh, a resonant circuit. And what I've been trying to show here is how you can use the impedance analyzer of the analog discovery to investigate the characteristics of circuits. Now, as I've said before, the uh, like all instruments, the, the analog discovery has limitations, and one of those in this case is it can only go up to about 30 megahertz. But in for investigating basic electronic phenomenon, uh, everything from uh, simple RC circuits all the way up to complicated uh, phase lock loops and uh, transmitters and things of that sort. The analog discovery and its 30 megahertz bandwidth are sufficient to do a wide variety of experiments. And so I'm hoping that we'll be able to continue this series working with some of the things in the analog discovery repertoire that are uh, depicted or described in the Art of Electronics lab book. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed this and you'll look forward to some future videos. But as I usually say at the end, in the meantime, have a nice day.